episode of QUTV After Hours. I'm Sarah Valkamp, and I'm joined by several members of the QUTV team, reporters Colleen McCormick and Lizzie Bowles, and our producer, Joshua Hale. Today, we're talking about some of the major stories from the past semester, both here at QUTV and in the news. Let's talk about some of the major changes on campus this year. One of the more pleasant changes that has been one that took place at the UC over winter break. Earlier this semester, we told you about the new food options and the presentation. But over spring break, even more changes took place, and the UC looks better than ever. So guys, what do you think about the new changes at the UC? I think they're, I think they're really great changes. Um, whenever I got here my freshman year, I remember that um, it was very, it was kind of like a, I want to say it wasn't like downtrodden, but it was like maybe a little dingy. It, you know, it just seemed like it had like a dirtier feel, like it wasn't up to like the standards that it could have been. And, you know, over this past winter break especially, and then, you know, over spring break, we saw the changes with uh, like the soda machines and um, they, I know they put in over spring break, they went and put in uh, new tiles and, and things like that. So I think it gave it a, a new look and I think it's gonna be something that uh, hopefully sticks around. That's the first thing I noticed was the new tiles. I walked into the UC and I was like, are these new floors? And I, I couldn't quite tell because I think they must have did the same kind of tiles, but um, it, it took me, it, they looked newer, so you could tell. Yeah. I'm still super excited about the fountain service. Still my favorite part. Yeah. I like the flavor blast. Exactly. I mean, because they had the fountain soda before, but now they have like the flavor blast, and so that's mm -hmm. that's the bomb. I'm glad that they finally they, they gave water though, because everyone was all angry that they didn't have free. They took away the free water and you had to buy it, and so like everyone was in an uproar about it. But they they fixed that, and so. I think I'm a big fan of the um, all the options that they have for quick meals now. They have like all the packaged sandwiches that they make still, and like the um, the pizzas and the eggs, uh, egg burritos. Oh, the egg burritos are my favorite. Have you had the egg burritos, Sarah? No, I have not tried them yet. They're delicious. <laughs> definitely, definitely consider uh, an egg burrito. It's my favorite. I wonder if they're better than McDonald's breakfast burritos. I've never had a McDonald's breakfast burrito, so I'm kind of I've had both. curious to see if, like, if they're better than that or not. Uh, I don't know. It's hard to, it's a, it's a tough call. Yeah. You guys have to find that out and let us know later. Earlier this semester, we had a story on working while attending school. Many QU students work part-time jobs in their free time to get themselves through school, along with nearly 80% of students in the nation. Do any of you work part-time jobs? And how do you think working part-time affects students? I had three jobs last year while I was going to school. It was awful. It was great. The money is great, though. If you can do it and you know not be super involved in the school day. Yeah, uh, the only job I have is campus ministry. I work <laughs> on campus, so it's not, I don't think it's a, as big of a hassle for students if you were working on campus because many of the on-campus jobs allow you to have some time to work on your homework, which is nice. Um, and it's also not as demanding of hours. So working off campus, that I bet that would be hard. I haven't done it while in college and that, that might be hard. Sarah, I know that you, you're like a big part-time worker. Yes, um, well, the average for students to work during a week is 19 hours a week. And currently, I'm working about 32 hours a week between two jobs, one on campus and one off campus. Personally, if you manage your time well, it's doable, because I had three jobs last year. I had two jobs this year. Um, I'm still getting like an A average in my classes. So if you manage your time well and you know how to handle it, and then also, like you said, on campus job, I can do my homework there. So that helps a lot. Yeah, I, uh, I've been working at the, you know, at the local WG and the local uh, NBC affiliate for o over a year now. And even uh, before there, like uh, the year before that, I worked at Bergner's, which is at the mall. Both um, take up a, uh, Bergner's took up a good amount of my time and uh, WGM takes up a lot of my time too. And um, I think my advice to students would be that if you're gonna get a part-time job now, this might be a little harder when you're just a freshman or a sophomore, but if you're looking for a part-time job during college and you have the, if you have the ability, uh, opportunity rather, to get a paid internship, I would recommend doing that because um, just in my experience having worked something uh, at a job that didn't have anything to do with my major and then working a job that directly correlated with my major, um, you enjoy it so much more and then it doesn't feel like work. I think anyone who's done something that's kind of like related to their field would agree that um, if, if you enjoy it, it's not, it's not work as much. 
So um, that's what my advice would be. But yeah, like you said, it's definitely manageable. Um, you know, if, if you manage your time right, it's definitely doable, and it's it's worth it. So that's what I would say. And for all you students, uh, Kristen Leeson is walking around talking about the job fair and internships that are available. So if you want to get a hold of her and ask her about that, that will also be helpful. One of the first stories the QU TV team brought back in January revealed just how many students are now purchasing their books online from vendors such as Amazon and eBay. Many students thought it was cheaper to buy them online rather than a private seller. So guys, what are your thoughts on the different methods of buying books? I get all my books from Chegg, and uh, I mean it's cheap that way. Um, I I don't I'm not biased towards any particular vendor. If it's cheaper there, that's where I'm going to get it. Um, I know a lot of um, I know the general consensus I guess is that the books are more expensive through the bookstore or you know other like just centralized like bookstores that only sell textbooks. But um, I just go I go where the money's the cheapest. So yeah. Um. I know I get mine all from the bookstore, but I use all of my financial aid to get it, and that's why. Uh, I do know that um, the reason that our bookstore is so much more expensive than online and stuff is because publishing companies. I know Ben's been trying to work with everybody with it, though. So. I know I get <laughs> I get mine from Amazon. I'm the same way as yeah. you. The, where the money's the cheapest, that's where I'm going to get my textbooks. And usually you can get you can find some pretty good deals online. Doesn't matter which vendor you use, you can you can find, I found like $100 textbooks for $20 before, so that saves you a lot of money. The one question I'm curious about is, um, this is something I was thinking about on the way over here actually, is, um, you know, if, so say if, if the bookstore lowered their prices, but, uh, and then more people bought the books, would that be the same, like would it level out to be less people buying the same books for more you know what I'm saying that's like something I think would be interesting to see because uh, you know you would think that the school would want students to utilize our bookstore more right. than more than most obviously but um, you know clearly I don't think students you know it just you know books are expensive and that's I think that's a, that's the plain and simple truth books are expensive if you go to I bet you you could go to almost probably any college in the United States and the books are probably going to be like they're going to be on par, especially if, if that course requires the same books, you know, as the ones here, right. you know. So I think that that's something I think about sometimes is that, you know, even though people, you know, more or less complain about the, the book prices, you know, they're set and there's there's nothing really that can be done about that. Just, you know, hunt the best you can and hope you can find a good deal. Recently, we created a new segment for QUTV called Do You Know QU? This segment centers around different campus facts or happenings that people may not know about, such as the Rally Bell or the Rare Book Room in the Brenner Library. What do you guys think about this new segment? Did you learn something you didn't know before? I think it's a, it's a cool segment. Um, it's definitely something that is unique to us. Um, you know, many peop people who watch QU uh, TV, they're going to get to see some interesting facts. Like, I bet not many people knew about um, the ashes that were in the chapel. I, I was actually the one who brought that to, um, to our attention and decided that we should do a story on that. And I think that, that um, that's something that not everybody knows, but it's something very unique to Quincy University. So I think it's a cool segment, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of history um, with the school that I don't think a lot of students know about. And the students that do know about it, I feel like it's more upperclassmen because I know that uh, he's not around as much uh, like as far as the school's concerned. But um, uh, Brother Ed, he used, to, he used to be involved in campus ministry a lot. And he would take people on um, his, uh, as some of you might know, the school has a little, rep re little bit of a reputation for being haunted in certain places or like having like little having ghosts and stuff and so he knew a lot about that he knew a lot about the history of the school so he's you know told me different things several uh, students that I know uh, have had conversations with him so uh, I learned a lot about it through him but um, I think the do you know uh, do you know is a great segment because you know as we go through we become you know upperclassmen we gain knowledge I think it's cool to get that information back out to the student body um, that way it can, you know, it can matriculate through um, because how are, you know, there might be some really awesome things. Like I know that the next show, the, our, uh, 
upcoming episodes with QUTV is going to uh, pertain to uh, uh, the Do You Know segment is going to pertain to the, the tunnels and a little bit of the uh, history behind that. And so you'll get to figure out uh, next show exactly what's what's going on um, with that and uh, where that all came from. So it's things like that that are really cool that this segment is going to give students a chance to learn about. I think these segments also like make students appreciate QU more. Like instead of just looking at it as an academic school, which it is, but it also has history behind it. So you can appreciate like ancestry that happened and different like memories that happened here that you can relate to if you want to. So I think it's a really nice segment. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, I, I think you're 100% correct. Um, it's, I mean, this, our school's over 150 years old. And you know, that may not seem that old in the long run, but there are a lot of brand new schools or, you know, recent built schools out there that people go to and um, you know our school might have its more downtrodden areas uh, you know from being being around so much but I think that that's one of the things that brought me to QU was you know um, it, it just it seemed like they had a little something more because it was older and I like that if you know a fun fact about QU that most students don't know let us know and we'll look into it your idea may be the next Do You Know segment. Moving on, with temperatures remaining below freezing for weeks at a time, this winter has been one for the books. Quincy saw a lot of snow, which made driving difficult for many students, and school was even canceled a few times. Guy, what do you think about the winter? This winter has been rough, <laughs> and I was saying as I came in here today that this uh, warm spring weather is much needed. It's so nice out right now. But I just want it, to, it just, it was a rough winter. There was so much snow for so long, and it just didn't go away. It made driving difficult, and, you know, they didn't, they couldn't clear the sidewalks as quickly as they could, and it, it just was, it was very rough winter. Yeah, I was, I was talking to uh, Travis, our executive produ producer here at QUTV, um, before the show about how this winter is, this is the winter that made me hate winter. I've never been someone who, <laughs> one of those people who are like, oh, I can't stand winter, it's, it's horrible. I am now one of those people. I'm ready to be done with winter and be out of these climates that can produce uh, snow. So um, my truck is horrible in, in the snow, too. I think that's probably like 99% of the reason. It's a rear-wheel drive truck. So any snow, even like a quarter of an inch, get the stuff. Mm -hmm. so. I don't know. I think mine's worse. My the favorite part was it kept coming and then going away and getting nice and then coming back. If it would have just come and stayed and gotten done, I'd been fine. But with it returning all the time, it was too much for me. Well, also with the weather like coming and going, it makes it a lot worse for drivers because you don't expect it. And then that's when accidents happen because you're not expecting the ice in the morning when you're going to school or you're going to work. And then also for QU, it caused a lot of problems like the um, – the staircase going up to Brenner Library, the reason why it is blocked off is because underneath, water had gotten into the concrete, froze, and then broke the concrete, and it was falling off. So that is another problem that the weather can cause and has caused this year. Yeah, there's, and there, not only just those stairs, but then there was also the staircase um, to Francis Hall by the UC in the back there. That was blocked off a couple of times because of ice falling off of the roof of Francis Hall. So it's just this w this weather has been um, it's been it's just taken its toll on this campus and on all of the people here. Um, I know there were several times that my car got stuck and I had to call somebody to come and help me push it out. Um, it's just it's been hard. <laughs> now I know that uh, we had about I think we had two half days that w so we were called off like twice for like the second half of the day and then I think we only had one other day. That we were totally. I think we had two. Yeah, we full had. Yeah, days. sorry, we had two half days called off, like after twelve thirty, and then we had two full days at different times. Um, what do you guys think about that? Do you think that we should have been called off more? Do you think that we were called off the necessary amount, or that we shouldn't have missed school? And like, why do you guys? Why? Like, why do you guys think that? Well, one of the main things that, like, I think it was just the random day that we just got a message in the morning that school is canceled. Well, it's for the commuters, like myself, I can't, if it's snow and icy, I can't get to school. Like, I live out um, close to Fowler, which is about 20 minutes away from school, 
and it takes me a lot longer. I can't even get here. So it helps me a lot when they do cancel school because then I don't have to worry about emailing my professors or missing class. And then there's lots of people who live like 45 minutes to an hour away that you have to think about. So I think the days that they did cancel were necessary just because of the weather conditions for the commuters. But then again, the students living on campus, I could see how it could be like not understanding why they canceled because all you have is a walk across campus. I mean, anybody who lives on campus <laughs> is going to welcome a snow day anyway, <laughs> though. Yeah. yeah, I think, um, and um, playing devil's advocate, I think that where the school, like where you see that um, maybe ha not having snow days where maybe like a lot of other schools uh, do have snow days, it, probably because of the amount of on-campus students versus the amount of off-campus students. I think I, I'm pretty sure that over over half of our students are on campus. That might be incorrect, but I, a good majority of them are. And so I feel like that school has to, you know, it's got to be a tough decision to make sometimes of, oh, are we going to cancel school because of this group of people when this group of people is fine to walk to campus? So um, I think that there were, they made some good calls because we had a lot of ice too. We had, like, yeah. I know especially one of, one of the snow days, um, it was like a quarter of inch of ice had fell the night before, and then we got like six to seven inches the next day. And that was, I mean, that was dangerous for three or four days, even after it stopped snowing. Yeah. Well, thankfully the cold winter months are behind us, and happy days of spring are here again. Earlier this year, we highlighted a new shop downtown called Happy Days. With warmer weather upon us, we recommend you venture to the downtown Quincy and check it out. The first person to post... Happy Days uh, are here again on QTV's Facebook. We'll receive a $15 gift certificate to Happy Days. One of the big changes this year on campus was the campus security at Francis Hall. It now has a new ID card accessibility to all doors of the building. What do you think the new card access in Francis Hall is about, and how do you think the transition went? Well, it's about keeping students safe. That's, that's the main issue is trying to keep people safe. Um, you know, it's always safer to have more doors locked than not have them locked. Um, the transition, as with any new technology, it could have gone smoother for sure. Um, I know that I had trouble in the beginning. Like it worked one day and then the next couple of days it stopped working. But then I took my ID to um, Sam Lathrop in security and I said, my ID card's not working, and he fixed it right away, and I haven't had any troubles since. So I think if you're still having troubles with it at this point, just go and talk to security, and they should fix it for you. Yeah, I think that um, that's, I mean, that's good advice. If you're having problems with that, that card, definitely, uh, definitely go to security. But um, I think I haven't had any problems with it at all. Um, my card has worked fine 100% of the time. Um, the only times where I've had an issue wasn't even a card or a card reader issue. It was just that um, it w the signal wasn't strong enough to like go all the way into my wallet and sense the card. So I actually had to physically take it out because a lot of people like to just bump their wallet uh, up, up against the, the card reader. So I'll have to like take out the card sometimes. But um, for being safe, I think it's a really great idea. You know, that the only door that's unlocked is um, during the day is that main entrance, and that can be monitored a lot easier. And um, I think it's a really good idea because. So many college campuses now, um, and not just college campuses anymore, but like grade schools and like businesses, um, are having these these active shooter problems. And you know, I remember a few years ago when you had, um, I, you know, there's been, there's been several, but you know, when this first started a few years ago to really pick up, you know, the first couple were like, oh my gosh, you know, like when Virginia Tech happened, and it was, you know, that was a huge deal. And not to not to minimize, not to minimize. Um, any of the other ones that have happened, but it's like they're happening with such frequency that um, we're, it's almost like we're getting desensitized to it, I feel like. Because whenever I see one, you know, before when you would hear about these shootings or these stabbings for like a week, you might hear about them for the next two days, three days maybe, and then like, you know, you don't really hear about them again. The nice thing about the new security that I like is I was talking to Tiffany Nolan and she brought up that if anything were to happen, all they have to do is press a button on their computer and all the doors are locked. Rather, before, you'd have to go around, security would go around, lock all the doors by hand, and it would take a much longer time for anything to happen during that time. And now it's just a click of the button and then all the doors are safe. So I, um, I really like it because it kind of opens up. I know right now they close, is it 10 or is it 11 that they're closed down? I'm not sure. I can't, um, remember. I can't remember either. Okay. 
because I know a lot of us, um, a lot of um, my friends and I work at all, on our homework at like 2 a.m. And it kind of opens up the possibility of being able to access things during, you know, regular building hours, maybe in the future, maybe not yet until we get all the kinks worked out, but yeah. maybe sometime we could work that out. That way so students can like sit right. in a computer lab rather than keeping their roommate up at two in the morning trying exactly. to do, write their paper. Exactly. Um, it does open up that possibility, yes. Yep. In just a few weeks, Quincy University's Pan Hellenic Council will be hosting the second annual Strides for Shannon. The run walk benefits Shannon Peters, a former PU student who was struck by a vehicle on campus last January. What do you guys think of this event, and how do you think it will affect the second annual? Well, um, I was a big part of it last year. I was um, I ran, uh, walked in it, um, and I, I was friends with many of the people who started it, and I am still friends with many of the people who are continuing it this year. They expect it, or they're hoping very uh, strongly for it to be even bigger than it was last year, which I think is great because it was pretty big already last year. Um, you know, they're talking to businesses, seeing if they can get some donations so they can have more prizes maybe. Um, they're seeing if anybody wants to be sponsoring the event and they're making, um, like they, they designed a new logo for it and everything. So I think it's gonna be pretty successful in its second year. Yeah, I'm excited to run in it. Last year, um, you know, being a part of Greek Life, Greek Life is a huge part of, of putting on the event. And I, so I got to, um, I kind of was like a, a pace setter. I like kind of rode around and just you know, monitored things and, and whatnot. But I'm excited to be able to run it this year. Um, I, I'm getting ready to sign up in a few days. So I think for it being a benefit, it is very helpful to Shannon's family. Um, I know that they had like the updates on Friends for Shannon Peters Facebook page and you could read like how she was doing and there was one recently I think back in January that said she was doing a lot better and she's independent and she can do things on her own which was a huge step from last year when we heard that she may not be able to talk again or walk again so I think just as a reminder that she still has all the support at QV but that she doesn't have Friends Q anymore is a huge huge blessing for her family. Yeah I agree and actually people who um, there is a rumor that Shannon is going to be at the Strides for Shannon this year, and her family, I, I know they were at least invited, so they might be there. So that's a, something that people who've been keeping up with the Friends for Shannon Peters Facebook page would be interested in seeing, is actually meeting up with her and talking to her parents, talking to her sisters, and seeing Shannon, seeing how she's actually doing. It would be nice to see them all. Thank you all for joining this panel this week, and thank you for tuning in to QUTV After Hours. For all of us here at QUTV, we'll be back next week with a new episode of QUTV. Until then, Hawks, keep soaring high.